Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Confidence is never a question when it comes to wide receivers, and these two are no different. It's Green's Bengals going up against Thomas's Broncos. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, we are a couple miles west of the Colorado State Capitol building as we come to you from Sports Authority Field at Mile High here in downtown Denver. A moment ago, through a shower of pyrotechnics, it was the hometown Broncos taking the field as they get set to do battle with the Cincinnati Bengals. And we say hi again, one and all. Brandon Gaughton here as we count you down to kick off. And I turn to my partner, that's Charles Davis. And Charles, I know even a former defensive back like you can admire some of the receivers in the game today. And Larry showed us a couple that are very likely to stand out in this one. Yeah, and it's hard for me to admit that I actually admire receivers. <laughs> but with their acrobatics, with their speed, with their moxie, and the way they go up and get the football, they can change the outcome of a game in an instant. The Broncos will kick. Here's Brandon McManus to start us, and we are off from Denver. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Out now comes Andy Dalton and the Cincinnati Bengals. Close loss this last week to Tennessee, and now, Charles, they just sit at 3-6. and six, And... And they did take the lead late on an Andy Dalton pass to A.J. Green, but it wasn't enough. It just feels like they just can't gain traction. You know, they still have recognizable people, Andy Dalton being one of them. A.J. Green played the entire game, had a big 70-yard touchdown pass from Dalton. But they just can't put it together consistently, thus they end up losing some close ones. First and ten. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. It'll be a gain of nine, and that'll make it second and short. I like it. I like it. I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game, and you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it. and really gets them amped up as they go forward. Now a first carry for Giovanni Bernard. Oh, that's just not fair. And now room to run. The 20, 10, and all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Giovanni Bernard, 67 yards. And the Bengals are going to take a first quarter lead. You talk about explosion plays. Here's one pretty much right out of the gate. And now they get to ride a wave of emotion, momentum, everything. Just as you, just as you described, right out of the gate. Big sprint, touchdown. They're excited. But on the other side, they've got to guard against a major letdown because they hit them right in the gut with that one. And now you start to question yourself a little bit when you give up a touchdown on the opening drive. And he's got it to make it 7-0 Bengals. It only took him two plays there to find the end zone. The last one, the long run, getting him in for six points. Bullock out now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. 
The Denver offense was limited last week against New England as Brock Osweiler brings out the rest of the crew. 41 to 16 in that game, and after starting three and one, they're now three and six, five game losing streak. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Worst losing streak in seven seasons. All these losses in this streak by 10 points or more. They've lost back-to-back -back games to the Patriots for the first time since 1966, and that's significant because both of them were original members of the American Football League, mm -hmm. so they've known each other for a long time. It is just tough to watch right now because the Denver defense is so good, but the offense is sputtering so much, it keeps putting them in rough situations. Now a play fake here on first down. And the catch made. This is Emmanuel Sanders. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. So the offense has it first and 10. Now it's Osweiler. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it to Benny Fowler that time. And now it's second down. The offensive lineup now, and the guy we highlight, Emmanuel Sanders. You can use him in any spot as a wide receiver. In the slot, out wide, it doesn't matter. He just makes plays. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Now a carry. It's C.J. Anderson. He'll take this from the 40 up to the 45 for a gain of five. The defensive starters now for Cincinnati. A former first-round pick, Drinker Patrick, had to bide his time in Cincinnati before he became a starter. But since then, he's become one of the key players on their defense, and they made him a priority in free agency. They lost a few other guys, but made sure that they locked him down with a brand-new contract. And a nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. the shotgun Osweiler and this is going to be incomplete now the second year man from Syracuse Riley Dixon on to punt Alex Erickson deep for Cincinnati He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. Now this Bengals offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got him that 7-0 lead. Of course they would. And look, they're on the road. So getting the 7-0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. Start out here with the option left. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. And the offense behind the chains here, a touch on second and 11. Now the rookie from Oklahoma, it's Joe Mixon. And he'll power his way up near the 25. 
Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. And here's the offensive unit, and we highlight a very good guy, A.J. Green. Let's just make it simple. He's a game-breaker. And the Broncos go to a nickel set on third down. Yeah, they've got an extra DB out there. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. I know where we're headed on this. Terrific catch, gets his feet down, sets up a fourth down and short situation. But I bet we're wondering, why didn't he get to the first down marker running his route? Am I correct? You gotta know where the marker is, right? Gotta figure it out. I know every receiver is taught that. Sometimes circumstances change it. At least they have an opportunity to make a decision with not much yardage to go. Punting now is Huber as he sends it away. 51 yards on the punt there. And the Broncos take over, first down. And 10. The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Anderson as they begin this series on the ground. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Like, it's lost. You can't find him. And sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guys trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost. But this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. Green, 39. Green, 39. On first down, Osweiler. Screen play, Anderson. He'll take this up just shy of the 40. Excellent display of footwork on that run. A nice little screen. They get six on first down. Just the first quarter of a tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and wearing all offseason about our season open opponent, and they had a receiver that could shake and bake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. Ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But if I had missed him, it, it would have been, been a, been a story. long night. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, forced the incompletion. That allowed me to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Frees up your guys elsewhere. All right, here we go. Now it's the Chiefs all-time leading rusher. It's Jamal Charles on the carry. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. They tried to run right into the teeth of the defense on third down, but um, looked like those teeth were pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> they were having absolutely none of it stuffed them for a loss. Yeah, couldn't get any leverage up front and move people aside in order to run the ball. Here's Riley Dixon now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. A 47-yard punt, maybe a couple on the return. And the Bengals will have a first and 10 from deep in their own territory. The Bengals offense now, they head back onto the field. And this is their third drive right now, maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down.
They go play action here on first down. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. The H-back, Ryan Hewitt, the intended receiver. And it's second down. And here's a look at the defense for Denver. Well, they keep to leave. You see the flamboyance on the field, but what you don't see is all the time he spends in film sessions talking about the game, understanding what opponents are trying to do. Then he utilizes that perfect frame he has, long, rangy, and strong, to run with receivers, knock them off their routes, and make big-time plays on the football. Another look for Dalton on second and ten. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. John Ross, the one he was looking for, and it's third down. Shot here for Dalton. And he's taken down. Back at his own seven. Shane Ray with a big time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Here's Kevin Huber now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. That's pulled in at the 32. A big boot that time, 57 yards the official distance. And possession will switch hands first and 10. The Bronco offense now set to come back out onto the field. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? They go play action with Osweiler. Sanders has it over the middle. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. 23 yards on the play. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. First down, here's the run with Anderson. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Again, Anderson. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. So they run it on second down. Now let's see what third down brings here for the offense. the gun. It's Osweiler. And able to find Green. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. 
So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And McManus able to put it through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So this offensive unit, they've now had three drives, and they only have three points to show for it. Payoff is the key for everything. How many offenses have we talked to that say we have to finish drives? Thus far, this team hasn't finished it quite the way they wanted to. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Nixon gets the nod to start the drive, and he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it, because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Again, it's Mixon. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Third down from the gun, Dalton, and that's complete to LaFell. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. A Bengal first down, Dalton hitting LaFell. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down, and that's what he just did. On first and ten, here's Andy Dalton. On the right side, caught by Green. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage, it'll be back at the 36. They threw the screen to the perimeter, but to no benefit at all. Tackled behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of yardage. take this up to about the 37. Just a yard there, so it brings up a tough third and 12. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. 
But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. They control the clock, they control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Now the Bengals on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third down and 12. Fakes the give to Bernard. Dalton. And a right side completion here by LaFell. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. The look up to the scoreboard as time has run out on this first quarter. 7-3 the score. Charles and I back to Denver after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, and it's the Bengals with the football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Throwing on second down. Green's got it over the middle. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Dalton to Green for a Cincinnati first. Down to the 25. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Second down, Dalton. He completes it to Boyd. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. A great play there. 15 yards. And the Bengals are able to grow their lead. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Now Bullock to add the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon.
Bullock out now to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Now the Broncos offense, they get set to head back onto the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. They start the drive with Anderson. Now he'll be dropped at the 30. The shifty move got him a couple extra on the play. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Part I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Osweiler giving to Anderson on the draw. Anderson loses the football, and the Bengals grab it, and they take over. They'll set up shop at the 46-yard line. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around, and we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. Let's see what Dalton can do after the fumble recovery. And this is LaFell. It's caught. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. Play fake to Mixon. This is Dalton. And the grab by Croft. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. They'll get 14 on that one. Good for a bangle first down. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not even going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. right side it's complete and he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14 yard line five yards on the catch there brings up second down and boy they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him didn't they they certainly did and obviously they liked his measurables otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team height weight speed all of that but how about what they really said competitiveness that's what they really liked about him the way he goes after the football competes for it and decides when it's in the air it's his and only his passing it's dalton and this is incomplete he was looking for joe mixon there out of the backfield and it's third and five. 
That's a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works on that all the time. I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong. He's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work on a little bit more. Dalton now to pass. That's going to be caught by Ross for a Bengal touchdown. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic, but usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever, there it results in a touchdown. Here's Bullock now for the extra point. And it's 21 to 3. Five plays there on that drive. And it ends with a Bengals score. Bullock out now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll be out of bounds here, a yard shy of the 25 at the 24. And coming out now, the Broncos. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. Now let's go! Now a play fake here on first down, and it's caught over the middle by the tight end green. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Throw on first down with Osweiler looking left side and completing it to Thomas. That one goes for 24 yards. He's come a long way since his time at Georgia Tech. What did he run at Tech? He ran hitches and, and go routes, essentially. Yeah. I mean, but he ran them really well. He averaged well over 20 yards a catch while he was there. And he still creates downfield in the NFL. That big body and that willingness to go catch the football. He's pretty impressive. And his friends call him Bebe, the nickname his uncle gave him back in the day. Defense caught napping a little bit. 
the concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. It's up and good, and the lead is down now at 11. It's 21 to 10. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it's C.J. Anderson who tops it off with the touchdown run. McManus on to kick this one off. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. A good job in the passing game. Decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally, you run to set up the pass. Here, it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. Play action now, Dalton. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. Brandon LaFell, his intended target. That'll bring up second down. Second down now after the incompletion. They'll run it now out of the gun. And some room to roam now. Space to maneuver at the 40. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Well, partner, I have to say they caught him in the right defense there. Nickel set, fifth defensive back on the field, and they love to run against that because now you typically get a bigger blocker on a smaller defender. Yeah, because those DBs like you, they want the interception. They're not as worried about the running play, right? Not at all. And I, I, used to, I, I still remember being in school and one of my offensive line teammates used to say, boy, I love to come downfield and hit you little people. <laughs> Good run there. play action and this one is incomplete he was looking for his favorite target AJ Green that time and that'll bring up second down I like what they tried to do there they didn't get a completed pass downfield but they came off a of momentum play big time gain on the previous snap came right back and threw one deep hoping to catch him on their heels Passing again, Dalton on second and ten. And that is incomplete. And the Bengals on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and ten. Here's Dalton. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball, how much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. They'll run 
on it now, out of the gun. And he'll be taken down just shy of the red zone at the 21. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. They'll stay on the ground, mix it again. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. play and that'll make it third down and a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way and really we shouldn't be surprised should we that's what runners do especially the best ones they break tackles and gain extra yardage under four to play now clock running third down and Dalton to throw that's caught by his tight end, Uzama. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. And Bullock will put this one through, and that will get the lead up to 14. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. After the field goal, now it's Bullock to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two minute. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do.
Swallow with a give. This is Anderson. And an alley to run. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. We've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that would look like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the secondary. Hurry up, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. They go play action here on first down. throw is going to be incomplete. Emmanuel Sanders, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. From the gun, it's Osweiler. Now the ball's out. Osweiler lost it. to go here in the first half. Back to Denver right after this. Coming up at halftime, remember, we'll get you out to Larry Ridley in Orlando for highlights and analysis of this first half. That is, of course, unless you decide to skip him. And for the record, we do not encourage that. The Broncos on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This will be third and 15. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. From the shotgun, Osweiler. Over the middle this time to Fowler. And now the Bengal defense here calling a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he's on to punt for Denver. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. and 10. Over the middle, that's caught by Ross. And down he'll go at the 25. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't Yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. 
It's second down. Dalton looking. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. And the Bengals on third down. They've hit four of seven. This will be third and five. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact. Able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. Here's Kevin Huber now as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Demarius Thomas gets set to go again on offense. They've got to be thinking, how can we get him a little bit more involved here? Second quarter, you're down, and really, he's been out of the mix. I would agree with that, and oftentimes you hear, well, we're just taking what the defense is giving us, but sometimes that's just not good enough. Sometimes you have to take what you want, and that means getting him the football. Yeah, so far, just a single catch in this game. and 10. It's Osweiler. And it's incomplete. It's a dangerous pass. That's what it was. And it brings up second down. Let's face it. If you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Ten yards still left on second down. Let's go. Green, 39. Out of the gun, it's Osweiler. Over the middle, complete. It's Fowler. And down he'll go at the 25. And a stoppage here, a timeout before this third down play takes place. As the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. The Broncos on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. Here it's third and three. Osweiler now to throw on third down. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And now the Bengals are going to call another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Here's Riley Dixon now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. This is taken at the 23. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. And heading back out there, Giovanni Bernard getting ready to go again. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. 
How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. First and ten for Dalton. Looking left side, and it's complete. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. He got 29 yards that time. Nice completion there for Andy Dalton. Charles, you worked some of his games when he was at TCU. Now you've worked his games in the NFL. What progression have you seen? I've seen a guy who took over as a freshman in college and got better and better each year. Always added a little bit more to his game, got stronger. But the best part about him is he's always been accurate. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. So here we go, first and ten now. Out of the gun, it's Dalton. And over the middle, it's LaFell. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. And he spikes it to stop the clock. And now if they choose, they'll have a chance at maybe a long field goal try here just before the break. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. halftime here and it's the visiting Bengals out in front as we send you on down to our studios in Orlando where standing by is Larry Ridley with our EA Sports halftime report all right Brandon back to you guys in a minute but first it's indeed time for our EA Sports halftime report the Broncos haven't played their best football and trail because of it the Bengals have come in and looked good as the road team and will just keep trying to play hard and maintain the lead going forward all right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Bengals taking the field for their opening drive. It's Bernard who gets into open space. And this two-play drive goes for a touchdown. Third down from the 37 as they take a 7-0 lead. Dalton's going to complete the pass, and he'll be tackled at the 41-yard line. Bengals later on the drive, they would go with the option here, and he'd cap off the 11-play drive with a TD. Bengals go up by 11. Broncos have it on second and five. There's going to be a fumble here. He'd end up picking up 11 yards on the play. Following the forced fumble, Dalton hooks up with his speedy rookie from Washington, John Ross. And this play will go for six. That takes the lead up to 18. Now first and 10, Anderson's going to take off here. And a quick three-play drive ends with the score. Now trailing by 11. All right, Larry, these two teams back out there as we get set and ready for this second half.
So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a real, do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. The third quarter starts with a run from Anderson. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Now Osweiler on second down. And his throw is incomplete. Virgil Green is tied in the intended receiver. And now it's third down. The Broncos on third down. A pretty woeful 0 for 5 thus far. This is third and nine. Here's Osweiler to throw. And incomplete here on third down. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw. Unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. Here's Riley Dixon now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This will be fielded at the 17. And that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, the fact you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? They'll start here with a give to Mixon. And an alley to run. He's got the lane, and there he goes. Pass the 20. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. A big play there. 78 yards. And the Bengals add on to their lead. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. Now Bullock to add the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. So they hit pay dirt on just one play. The long run, the scamper, and a very nice scamper into the end zone for the touchdown.
Bullock out now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20. Call it the 21-yard line. So the Broncos coming out now. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Tenth carry now for Anderson. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. So the offense now dealing with a second and seven. Now Osweiler. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. I know for us it's fun, and it's not so much fun for the rookie receivers when we see them coming into the league and we're good training camps. You see them working on getting two feet down instead of one. But the best ones train in college trying to get two down instead of one, so the transition's a little bit less. In this case, though, wasn't able to complete it anyway. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Solid gain of 18 yards and a Denver first down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Now the offense lining up first and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. Man, these guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. See if they stay on the ground for a second down. Here's Osweiler. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he'll be knocked down sideways. The Broncos on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. This is third and eight. They go play action now. Osweiler. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Geno Atkins with a big time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. As aggressive as Cincinnati is on defense, I was surprised that they only had 33 sacks last season. Yeah, bottom half of the NFL. I think that helped contribute to them not making the playoffs. Remember, they had a nice little run going. That's the first time they missed in the last six. Here's Riley Dixon now. 
as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. Getting set to go again, Andy Dalton marches back onto the field. He's been a good game manager. They're winning here in the third quarter, but really the ground game is where it's been at for them, hasn't it? So whatever the game plan was, you just got to focus on continuing to run the football. And really, that takes the pressure off of the guy throwing it around. Doesn't have to be the focal point. Hand it off. Let him chew up the yardage in big plays. And your team's winning. The only people upset, the fantasy guys who may have started him at quarterback <laughs> in their leagues. And we'll see if they continue with a recipe of the ground game. The drive will commence with a run by Mixon. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Second down following the run. To throw here, Dalton. On the right side, caught by Green. Gets by him at the 25. And they'll get it all the way out near midfield to the 45. The gain of 39 that time. And depending on the type of screen called, especially when you're throwing it with one of your wideouts, it's different blocking. Sometimes you get great blocking from the other wide receivers helping you. And how about sometimes getting it from the offensive linemen who sell it like a regular screen pass and then get out in front of the receiver and help him get downfield. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Now a play fake here on first down. And a grab by Croft. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. And now a first down following that long game. They'll run it now out of the gun. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and that'll make it second and 12. So, Brandon, when this offense gathers together to watch tape for this game, they're going to be feeling pretty good about themselves until the coaches get upset about the play we just saw. But you know their defense is going to be. But we put up big points all game long. The defense is going to win one every now and then. It's already second and 12. The defense hoping to push him back more. Dalton gives to Bernard. And he stopped immediately there. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but now from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. Well, they know how to protect the pass, but sometimes cornerbacks, they can also stop the run, can't they? Is that what we call a complete corner? Yeah, because we're so used to these guys just being defenders in the pass game. How about the guys who can come up and make the tackles? That's what we just saw there for no gain, too. Third down, a shot here for Dalton. And that's complete to LaFell. And he's able to pick up the first before he's brought down inside the five at the four. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. 
Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. Pick a play you think they would run here and just load up for it and see what happens. And the offense inside the five here at the four. It's first and goal. Now they run with Mixon. And he takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Bengals. A great effort there. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Bengals are able to grow their lead. He keeps carrying the ball into the end zone. And in this one, he's sort of carrying the team on his back. He's the reason that they lead right now. No question about it. And you talk about on his back. He's not minding the extra weight at all, is he? carrying that just as lightly as he does the football. Yeah, the, what a great performance so far. Those three touchdowns, it's got him in the lead. So that drives seven plays in length, and it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. out now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Time for us to spotlight C.J. Anderson. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half. But let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went in at halftime, made a few adjustments. And you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play. Because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half, it gets ugly in the second half. They've come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. Handoff comes to Anderson. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. There is no doubt that Geno Atkins is really strong and stout at the point of attack, but I love his suddenness. The ability to make plays, to be in one spot, and then... He's gone, and into the offensive backfield, he's a heck of a player. And there, a big TFL tackle for loss. Hard to believe that his father, Gene Atkins, was an NFL defensive back. He's bred this big defensive tackle. One second down, here's Osweiler. Green's got it over the middle. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The Broncos on third down. Just one conversion and eight tries. Not good. This is third and four. They go play action with Osweiler. He's going to float this one deep right side. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. So because of the yards after the catch, they'll wisely decline the P.I. Yeah, since it was pass interference, they would have gotten the yardage at the spot of the foul. But as you correctly noted, a little bit of run after catch for him. That extra yardage made it easy to decline the penalty. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Osweiler. 
And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. Emmanuel Sanders from three yards out. And the Broncos get a bit closer. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. McManus now for the extra point. And that'll cut the lead back now to 21. Just a four-play drive that time. And it ends with a Denver touchdown. McManus on to kick this one off. And to no one's surprise here in Denver, that'll carry through the back of the end zone for a touchback. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. I guess it kind of goes without saying at this point, but he's had a great game, as we like to say, a nose for the end zone, no doubt. Continues to find it throughout this game, and I'm sure he's got a nice place to live. He might want to make an offer on the end zone for a second home <laughs> because that's what it's been like throughout this contest. He knows how to get there, and boy, he looks happy when he does. He's already bought all the property in the end zone. <laughs> that's the problem. He's going to sell to himself now. A first down throw coming for Dalton. And he slides to avoid the hit. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and that'll make this a second down. Room here to run. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. He's able to rip off 32 on that one. It's a first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. I'm wondering, partner, if they might need to sub him out for a play or two because after that long run he just had on the previous play, he might not have all of his breath back. Yeah, and they went right back to that well. Different result. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Fakes the give to Bernard. Dalton. He's going to let this thing go deep for LaFell. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. Tremendous field position there and a perfect time to do exactly what they did. Take a shot at the end zone. And they went for the big play, just unable to complete it. And Bengals on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This is third and nine. Passing. It's Dalton. 
It's caught. Left side, Brandon LaFell. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And that is not going to get there. Oh, he missed it short. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, it's still a good size lead, so they haven't necessarily needed him, but this is now two missed field goals for him in this game so far. Yeah, and the question now is, will he be prepared when they do need him? Whether that's later in this game or sometime down the line, having a kicker you can count on is definitely imperative. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive, but they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the last time out. They feel good about themselves. They feel like their game plan is now in effect. They know how to attack and what plays they want to put together. But they've got to keep it moving in the right direction because, as you did note, they are down on the scoreboard. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll take this one for about four up to the 40. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Let's go! From the shotgun, Osweiler. And on the catch right side, this is Sanders. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. come to the line they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter we'll return with more after this break you're watching the nfl on ea sports welcome back now to denver a lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Here we go now. Throwing now, Osweiler on first down. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. From the gun, it's Osweiler. He's going to air it out deep for Green. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. That was close to a big play, and just a little bit too far that he was led. He caught it but couldn't stay in bounds, Charles. Yeah, I'm not very good at these sort of things, but I have to believe the farther you are downfield, the less your margin for error in throwing the ball, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. Yeah, so they gave it a good effort there. Really tried, just couldn't complete it. On third down, Osweiler, and able to find Green. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. 
And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. 11 more on that one, and another first down. Something got lost in translation in this game. He's run the ball really well, done all the things that you want in a game plan, but unable to convert it into points, unable to ring the bell consistently enough to make it a winning effort. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They run it again with Anderson. And he's going to push his way down to about the 12. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. On second down, Jamal Charles. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they've got it first and goal. They were not fooling around at all, were they? Second and short, and they brought out the heavy package. Almost felt like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. Movement by one of the Broncos up front, and in comes the flag. So that'll back him up five. Still first down. Anderson and he will maneuver his way down to about the seven and that gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal throw it with Osweiler to the sideline wow what a catch doesn't get a lot out of it but he is able to keep the feet in bounds only able to pick up two and that leads us to third and goal was that a receiver <laughs> yeah actually it was it was a running back who was a receiver on the play Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down well those guys out of the backfield they got to be good agile with their feet he showed the agility there with a toe tap no doubt about it it's like he went to ballet school got the toes down and stayed in bounds now it's Osweiler and that is caught touchdown Denver Benny Fowler from six yards away and the Broncos cut into that lead. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower, bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball out of the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that.
So that one a long 11 play drive. And it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos. McManus on to kick this one off. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Bengals getting set to go. And last time out, another missed field goal, so maybe their confidence wavering a little bit right now in the kicking game. And I'm with you on that. I think at this stage, they'd love to not run him back out there in a tough situation. But let's face it, they may have to. So right now, the head coach is talking to the offense coordinator and saying, call this game like we're going to put it in the end zone. Let's try and take the field goal out of it. They go play action here on first down. Got his man complete over the middle. It's green. And he's able to get this one up to the 45-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. That's all they care about right now. He's up to about the 47-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. But now they're in a spot that every team tells us when we have our production meetings they don't want to be in third and long, and that's because those back-to-back -back running plays just didn't accomplish a whole lot. And the Bengals on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This is third and seven. Play fake. Here's Dalton. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up on the top shelf where the kids can't get it. Punting now is Huber as he sends it away. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12 yard line. The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a beat on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. They'll throw on first down with Osweiler. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. It's 
So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. to Anderson. Now it's Osweiler. Throwing over the middle and it's incomplete. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. From the gun on third down, Osweiler. He's got his tight end complete. It's green. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. First and ten, it's Osweiler. Screen play, Anderson. And some room to maneuver. And a nice gain of 21 yards. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. First down. He goes underneath for Anderson. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. to his tight end. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. To throw again is Osweiler. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Movement by one of the Broncos up front, and in comes the flag. Full start offense. That well, was a third and somewhat manageable, now not so manageable. Exactly, because you had a play call on that you felt like, hey, this could go quick, and it doesn't take much to get it done. Now, you've got to start thinking about a little bit of a deeper route type of a call, especially if you want to throw it. Seventh play of the drive, fourth coming on third and eight. Off the play fake, here's Osweiler. Got him in, he finds Sanders. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. 
And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. Throwing again, Osweiler. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. And on second and 10 now. So it looks like somebody may have forgotten the snap count and a five-yard penalty ensues. Not easy being a rookie left tackle in this league, and there they got him for the penalty. Not easy at all. Think about what you're dealing with every game you play. Ostensibly, the best pass rusher is over you on every snap. I'd be a little jumpy myself. Another tote here for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Anderson. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Call it a gain of 13 yards on the play. And that's going to lead to a third down. That was a good, strong run there. While it won't pick up a first down, it was definitely something needed by that offense. A positive run. They got a good push by their guys up front. Maybe something they can build on as this game continues. A long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. Here we go now. Green, 39. Green, yeah. They'll keep it on the ground. This time with Charles. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Well, look at the clock. You're down two scores. Have to go for this, don't you? And they thought that as soon as they took over possession. It didn't matter where they were on the field. They were always going to be in four-down territory. Backed up in good situation. It didn't matter. So they've been preparing for that on their play sheet the entire time. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Oh, and now movement and a whistle, and they may have to rethink their plans on fourth down. Offense. So that one will be accepted. They're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Hurry up, here we go. Green, 39. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And yeah, that is incomplete, but there is a flag. And on fourth down, this is a big call. So they decline the penalty. That seems a little <laughs> odd. I'm trying to work through it and work with them to figure out why. Well, someone's got to be confused. I, that's what I think. I'm pretty sure that the bench is saying take the penalty, and somehow in the heat of the moment, they thought they were saying decline the penalty, and that's going to work against them. They should have taken it. Play fake here on first down. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. Well, in tapping those toes, he tried to get both in bounds. He could not do it, though. In tap dance parlance, could not complete the shuffle. All right, needed to get that shuffle down with both <laughs> feet, not just one. Is that what they say? There it is. You know, put a little sand down on the stage. I'll take your word for it, my man. 
And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long, he's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. Now the Bengals on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and 11. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. Now he's hit, and Dalton lost the football. And a little bit of good fortune there. He wasn't able to get it back, but he did have a teammate on the spot able to retain possession for them. Kevin Huber now. Time for a break. Standing right on his own five-yard line. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Pulled in at the 24. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. And Denver getting set to take the field. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a, a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, that, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. Yeah, they'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. On second down, here's Osweiler. And caught right side, Green. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Out of the gun, it's Osweiler. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Personally, I think they've got to go somewhere else with the football. They've got him bracketed out there in double coverage. Makes it hard to fit it in time after time. It would have had to have been an absolutely perfect pass and not good enough. Again on second and ten now, it's Osweiler. The Bengal pressure gets him that time, down he goes. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As he'll talk it over here before what'll be an important third down. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. the Broncos up front and in comes the flag. False start offense. Still 
third down. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. Osweiler. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, he bounced up after taking a sack and took a shot downfield. I think a lot of us thought maybe he'd run draw in that situation. Instead, tried to get all back in one play. Yeah, third and long. Thought he needed the deep pass, couldn't connect it. Maybe he was hoping for a penalty downfield to give them the yardage they needed. Tossweiler on fourth down. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the other expression about Slim and none? Well, Slim just left town on that They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. And he'll give it here to his running back. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. And the offense will be looking to get at least some of this yardage back here. It's second and 12. And to give this time to the tailback. And he will cross the 30 down to the 29-yard line. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout. So as they talk things over, we'll step aside. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. They got to get to the 20 to keep the drive alive on third down. The Bengals go down to a knee in the victory formation. So on fourth down, Marvin Lewis sends on the field goal unit. This to make it a three-score game late. And Bullock will put this one through. And that'll push the lead up to 17. 
Well, the offense got the ball in a good spot, but they went nowhere. They settled for three. Brandon, I think it's safe to say that was a major disappointment. Had a great opportunity, excellent field position, and did not be able to move the ball at all. Big time letdown. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. On the outside, they're playing press coverage. From the shotgun, Osweiler. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. A big offensive explosion help leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon, everyone, as we say so long from Denver.